Hello guys and girls out there, wherever you are. Welcome to another totally random video. And what better way to start off the new year with another mini disc related video. Yeah. So first, let's start off with the sad news. I am going to get rid of my Sony MXD D3 because I had been replacing it with another mini disc deck. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. And first off, let me show you the new CD player that I got because the MXD D3 happened to be the only CD player that I have. And of course, now that I'm selling it, I need a new one. And this is the one that I got. This is the Sony CDP XE 510. And it's a pretty basic, pretty simple CD player, but it has everything that I want and that I need. So, um, yeah, it has analog line out, optical line out, and it also has uh, Control A1 ports. So, Control A1 is basically something where you connect two devices to synchronize them and all you need are or is an audio cable that has those kind of plugs typical headphone plugs on both sides to connect those two devices and the good thing about this cd player as you can already tell it can read cd text which is really cool and really helpful. Uh, the deck can read um, original CDs as well as CDRs. Unfortunately, no CDRWs. Um, that's basically exactly the other way around how it has been on the MXDD3 because this one was capable of reading CDRWs but for some reason, no CDRs. I have absolutely no idea why. And another strange thing. Usually I would like to burn my CDs with toast. And yeah, for some reason... So I, I want to use Toast because Toast is capable of uh, understanding flag and iTunes doesn't. So I wanted to burn everything with Toast, but the Sony MXDD3 isn't able to read the CD text if the CD has been burned with Toast. But if I burn it with iTunes, it can read the CD text. Pretty weird. And with this deck, it's exactly the other way around. When I burn it with iTunes, it can't read the CD text, but when I burn it with Toast. So I don't know why that is. I don't know if there are really this many different ways of how to burn the CD text informations on a CD. I have absolutely no idea. But, yeah. So this is my CD deck. With CD text and it works just fine. Now let's get to the main star of the show. And of course the main star of the show is my new mini disc deck. It is the Sony MDS JE530. Yeah, I know it doesn't look like much. I know it's a pretty basic, pretty standard, decent mini disc deck. 
but there is definitely a reason why I decided to get it. Um, see, the thing is, I also have a couple of vinyl records. And everybody knows if you record something on a vinyl record, if you record something on mini disc, especially from an analog source, such as a vinyl record, it's always good to use um, a mini disc recorder that uses the latest 8 track version possible. And for me, that would be the Sony MZ NH600 because it's a high MD recorder. Unfortunately, it started breaking down. Then I had the Sony MDS JE510, which used A-Track 4.0. Then I had the MXD D3, which used A-Track 4.5 and a 20-bit analog to digital converter. And now I'm using the JE530 because, as you can already tell, it uses A-Track. DSP type R. Which is a later and therefore even better version than 4.5. And yeah. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processor. So it has something to do with a better way of turning an analog signal into a digital signal and the other way around and the R stands for reallocating so it has something to do with reallocating bits so that the bits are being placed more accurately or more precisely and therefore the music sounds better and it's, it's closer to the original and something that I found really interesting because I also didn't know about it a track DSP type R is actually the last version of the original A-Track format. And everything that came after DSP Type R is a different format, even though it's still called A-Track. So that's kind of confusing, right? So you have the original A-Track, which is everything from A-Track 1 until DSP Type R, and then everything like A-Track DSP Type S, a track 3, A track 3 plus, A track advanced lossless, they are a different format. So, yeah. But I think I'm going to stick with A track DSP type R from now on because it's just the best A track version for me. Because all I want to do is I want to make real time SP recordings on standard mini disc. And A-Track DSP Type R is the best A-Track version that gives me the best recording quality for my purpose. And I don't care about stuff like long play, net MD, high MD. So I don't need any other A-Track version, especially not if it actually isn't A-Track anymore. So yeah, that's the way how it is. So now let's take a closer look at this deck. It has an analog line in, analog line out, coax line in, so digital coax. It has optical line in, optical line out, and of course control A1 ports so that I can also uh, sync this deck with the CD player. And when I record something it also copies the CD text information, which is really cool and really helpful. So let's take a closer look at it. Oh yeah, and instead of a 20-bit analog to digital converter, it uses a 24-bit analog to digital converter. And I know this doesn't mean anything because the number of bits doesn't say anything about the quality of the bits. So it is possible that a 16-bit converter sounds better than a 24-bit converter just because the quality of the bits is a different one. So um, yeah, you can read it online. I don't really know exactly what they mean when they say good or bad quality bits. But yeah, it's just not safe to say that 
everything 24-bit is better than 16-bit. That's just the way it is. So out here we have the buttons for fader, scroll, level, display, char or character, I don't know, uh, play mode, repeat and time so that we can see uh, the remaining time of the mini disc. This is one thing that I don't like about this deck. Unfortunately, there is no time button on the remote control. So you always have to go to the deck and push this button if you want to see the remaining time or the remaining recording time, which sucks. And I don't like that, but you know, that's the only downside. Standard buttons, you know, switch for the input, optical, coax, analog, record mode, stereo and mono, menu, clear, phono level, and timer, record on and off. And just like every other mini disc deck, it sounds terrible when you listen over headphones. So if you want to listen to your mini discs over headphones, use a phono amplifier or a headphone amplifier or listen to it over a mini disc Walkman because portable mini disc devices sound a thousand times better than the decks. So let's get into the menu. So what do we have right here? When it comes to the setup, we can set the track mark to on or live sync. So this way it sets a track mark automatically whenever it detects a, a silent point in the music that is longer than two seconds. I don't know if it's one and a half seconds or two seconds in this case, but that's the way it is. Um, this is actually a really helpful function. So this this tells you, or it basically tells the deck, uh, how loud the music should be to set a track mark. So if the volume of the source reaches at least minus, five, uh, minus 50 decibels for two seconds, it sets a track mark. But if you record something from a vinyl record, of course, a vinyl record isn't always that quiet because you have crackling and surface noise and stuff like that. So it wouldn't detect that there is a pause between both tracks. So um, let's just demonstrate this right now. So default is 50 or minus 50. So now I'm I start. Uh, let's go up here. So now I start a song. My live sync is on. Oh wait a second, it's still set to optical. So analog. So, uh, just a little bit further, yeah, see it. New song begins, no track mark. So that's exactly where this option comes in. So as we could see, it's somewhere right there. So let's try it again. Start recording. Uh. 
<coughs> yeah, copywritten music, blah blah blah, whatever. <laughs> And there you have it, new song, new track mark. So it's pretty convenient. Don't you think? I think so. So what else have we got? Um, there is also the peak hold, which is also very helpful to detect where the highest peak is. So if we set this one to on, you can see how it always stays at the highest point of the music. So this way we can t detect the loudest spot on the vinyl record or whatever. So it's pretty, pretty helpful, I would say. Okay, let's stop. Uh, another thing that is really helpful. Uh, usually, if you want to, uh, for example, if you want to record something from an analog source, for example, from a vinyl record, you want to listen to it and find the loudest point so that you know how loud you have to set uh, the analog line in volume so that you can record something nice and loud, but still without clipping. And usually you would have to insert a mini disc and set it to rec pause mode so that recording is paused and now you can hear and see uh, the music and adjust the line in volume. But it's not really good for the mini disc if it stays in rec pause mode for such a long time. You know, let's say you want to listen to the entire vinyl record. So this deck actually has the ability to play it through. So um, if there is no disc inside, you just push record or wait. Let me just start playing the music on the vinyl record and. Now all you have to do is push record without a mini disc inside. And there you have it. You can see how loud it is. You can hear it. And yeah, that's pretty nice and convenient. It also works, of course, with coax and digital as well. So what else have we got? Um, so I already explained this one. This one, auto, space or pause. Smart space. So if there is a bigger gap between two songs or if there is a long time of silence, uh, it cuts out this part so that you have a shorter break between the songs. Peak hold already explained this. This is the time for the fader. This is fade in and fade out. This is analog in volume, coax digital volume and optical line in volume. And of course the analog line out volume, sleep timer, so after how many, how many minutes the deck will automatically turn off and you can set sleep to on and off. And that's basically those functions. And when it comes to um, editing or adding edit, so we have name, name in, erase, erase all and copy the name. Then we have track erase, move, combine, divide, set A and A, B and A, B erase or erase all. 
And of course, now you want to see how it works with. God damn it, it's really reflecting right now. Uh, now you, of course, want to see how it works with um, the CD text, right? So um, you have to make sure that you don't push music sync because that's the mistake that I made the first time. Because if you push music sync, it records everything basically automatically and it also sets the track marks automatically but it doesn't copy the cd text it only copies the cd text if you use one of those buttons from the cd sync section so we push standby cd sync standby come on focus And then I just push play. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Of course, I have to switch to optical <laughs> because I want to record something from the CD deck right now. So push CD sync standby. So they both this one goes into play pause, this one in rec pause, and then I push play. And you can see it automatically copied the CD text. So, really nice, really helpful, really convenient. So yeah, that's basically everything there is to know. No, it's not everything there is to know. Because there is another interesting thing about this deck, something that I haven't tried yet, but according to some websites, with this deck, just like with some other specific mini disc decks, it is possible to do talk cloning. What exactly is talk cloning? Well, talk, as you can see, is standing right there. But when I eject the disk, it writes the talk information on the disk. And now the talk is written on the disk. So what exactly is it? Well, talk basically is the table of content. It's a, a table or a file that stores all the information about this specific disk. You know, where the tracks begin and end. So all the track marks, how long the disk is, how long are the songs, titles of the songs, title of the disk, everything. And yeah, talk cloning basically means that you can copy those talk informations from one disk onto another disk. But the thing is, it's nothing official. It's more like a little hack or a little trick. So it's basically, it has something to do with fooling the deck. So, uh, yeah, you have to enter a mini disk and you have to enter the test mode and then somehow eject the mini disk without the deck realizing it. And, you know, it's pretty complicated and it also works differently for every deck. And I also don't know if it's possible to damage the deck with it, but yeah, it is possible. So it's very convenient, for example, if you have a CD player that doesn't have an optical line out, so you only have an analog line out, and if you record something analog and maybe the CD is soft mixed, uh, you have to set all the track marks manually and you have to type in all the track informations 
you know, like the titles and everything. And now you want to record the same thing on a different mini disc. So let's say you want to record this CD for a friend. So you record the CD again on a second mini disc and instead of setting the track marks automatically, uh, setting the track marks manually again and title the tracks again, you just take all the talk information from disc number one and copy it to disc number two and everything is done. But yeah, like I said, I don't know how it works with this deck and yeah. I have to get closer into it. And another thing that is interesting with this uh, talk cloning, it is possible to uh, to change the length of a mini disc. So you can turn a 60 minute mini disc into a 74 minute mini disc, or a 74 minute disc into an 80 minute disc, because you just copy the talk from an 80 minute disc to a 74 minute disc and yeah so that's really cool really interesting but I haven't gotten into it yet and I don't even know how to do it with my deck or if it's actually dangerous to do it but yeah that's just the way it is so I think um, we have covered everything. Well, you can you can also change the pitch when you record something from an analog line in. And you have also the ability to fine tune the bit the pitch. No, I didn't say the B word. Um, yeah. And you can also I haven't figured out how but you can also um, see um, the, uh, what is it called, frequency, you know, how many kilobits per second or something like this. You can also see that and yeah, it's a really nice mini disc deck, really convenient and also not too expensive. Both devices aren't really that expensive. This one, something like 37 or something like this. This one, uh, 52. So really not that expensive, but still really cool, really helpful. And I think that's the setup that it's going to be for a long time until one of those two breaks down. So yeah. I hope you liked this video. It's been a pretty long but also pretty informative video. So thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions or whatever. Uh, subscribe, keep watching and like I always said, I see you in the next one. Bye.